As promised last week, I'm going to give you five automation ideas that you can implement with Home Assistant with media players. Quick note, if you're brand new to Home Assistant and you are struggling, I have a free Home Assistant course. It will only take you 40 minutes to go through and it will give you all the basics that you need to start your Home Assistant journey. Now let's just get straight in. No, actually, first, let's roll the intro and then let's get straight into it. First automation will be playing a camera stream. So go to your automations and scenes, click create automation and click create new automation. I'm gonna show you one that I already made. This is how the automation is structured. We've got a doorbell, a nest doorbell, and as soon as that is pressed, so you can see I'm detecting the device, the front door, and the trigger is doorbell pressed. You can change this to motion sound and person detected. Once that has happened, and I'm checking that my TV is currently on, then I'm gonna be streaming the front door. So you just go to service camera, play stream, and then I'm actually picking a Chromecast. So I tested this with my Samsung TV and LG TV, and I didn't get this to work out of the box. The only device that I have at home, I also, sorry, I also tested it with the Apple TV, that also didn't work. So the only device that I've got at home that did actually work with this is Chromecast. And it sounds a bit obvious from the point of view that this is their both like Google products, but it's a little bit disappointing because I thought this feature would have been a bit more powerful, but it might change in the future. But this actually does work really well once you have it set up. And because the TV auto detects changes in sources, when you actually play this, it automatically switches to the right HDMI source. If you wanted to do that, I'm gonna show you the next automation, which will show you how to switch sources easily. All of these automations that you'll find in today's video will be in the blog post as usual, so you can copy and paste the code and consume it that way. In the second automation, I'm gonna show you how you can switch HDMI sources. Now, one of the use cases of this could be if you have a CCTV network video recorder attached to an HDMI disc. And if there's some sort of significant motion that you can determine in one of your cameras, you can get your TV to come on and switch the source so you can actually pull up the CCTV monitoring. The way I'm doing this, I use Unify Protect at home. So I will be putting up the Unify Protect app in my Apple TV. So that's how I'm achieving this. So let's, uh, let me talk you through the actual automation. First thing is to set up is a state change. So you click on add trigger and you go to this triangle where you say state. And then let me expand this so you can actually see it. So I'm using a Unify Protect camera that's gonna detect if there is anyone in the garden, okay? So the status is from off to on, so there's been a change. So we've got this set up. You can also, uh, for like false positives, set like a four, so they need to be there for at least five seconds for it to trigger. That's up to you, really. And then one of the conditions that are set up, so conditions are optional things in automations, and they block the actual action. So these conditions need to be true for them to be met. So the first thing is the patch your door is off, meaning the patch your door is closed. So we've got this set up, so that means that the door needs to be closed and there needs to be motion in the garden. You can build on top of these automations uh, and add more use cases, maybe perhaps you can add if it's at night or if you're away from home, so you can restrict the number of notifications that you will get. I'm adding two notifications. One notification is just to my phone um, because that's good practice. And while I've got the second action that I'm taking, so to create an action, you just click add action and you can see the bell, the call service, that's what you need, and then you will get this. So in terms of the media players, I'm doing select source, and I've picked, and I've clicked choose entity, and here it will give you a nice drop down of all of your media player entities to pick from, and then the, you'll need to find what the source name for that device is. So to find the source name, the source name is not a drop down uh, list, which would be quite nice. If you click on settings, Go to your devices and services, and you should see your Apple TV integration or any media player that you're actually using. You can see the living room uh, device over here. Um, so if I click on this, you can see the source, and you can scroll down, and you can actually see protect. You need to like type it in exactly the same. So this is one way you can see it. You can also use the developer tools to find the source list as an alternative. So once you've got this set up, save it. I would suggest you maybe try to um, run 
these automations. So this will like trigger the actions, bypassing conditions and triggers. And then you wanna try to trigger, get the trigger to actually work and see if the conditions are working. So you want to sort of a little bit test it out because it has a few components to this, but this is your second automation. Let's move on to the third automation. But before we do, if you're getting value out of this video and you wanna see more of these automation videos with Home Assistant, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. This automation here is a cool automation and it will be subtle and not many people will actually notice that this is actually happening but I think you will enjoy it and it will add a lot of pleasure. If most of us volume control our devices based on the time of day, unless you live on your own or you live in a detached mansion somewhere where you can blast the music at any time of the day, normally we would have our uh, sounds higher during the day and lower during the night, especially if you have kids that are sleeping in the house, for example. So this is very straightforward. I'm using this a clock, this time trigger, so you can, you can add trigger and you'll see it, the time pattern over here. So when the time is equal to, this is 9 p.m., 21 hours, then I am going to literally do a couple of things. So I'm going to switch dot turn off, and this is specific because I have Sonos uh, speakers. I'm using the Kitchen Beam Night Sound in the Lounge uh, Play Bass, and I'm enabling Night Sound. So Night Sound will be turned on, and to actually do this, you can just add any entity, keep adding uh, entities. In this example, there are switches, not media players. Um, and that's how you can have like multiple ones set up in this way. And then the second piece is similar. We're using the media player set volume and we are picking two media players again, kitchen, beam and lounge, and I've set this to uh, 0.1, which I believe is like 10%. Once you've got this set up, I would suggest you test this, but we're gonna be setting up to set up the reverse. So you, the automation that changes in the morning, for example, you can just go and click duplicate. And when you duplicate automation, you can rename the automation and then you can just change this. Now, uh, one pointer, when you do duplicate this, if you change the switch and say switch up, turn off, you will lose these two uh, selections. What you can do, to save that time, you can click on the three dots, go into Edit YAML, and you can actually just change it from here, right? So if I change it from here and I save it, then I switch it back to Visual Editor, you'll see that it switched to Turn Off and it kept the entities. But if I click on Turn On, you'll see that I've lost the entities. I can just go back and not save this, but you get the point. It's a little time saver, to be honest. This next one is gonna be controlling your lights when you are watching a movie or some sort of movie time scene. So I'm gonna show you how this works. So we've got movie in the living room. In this example, I have created this in the uh, YAML file, in automation.yaml, hence you see a different user interface and you don't see this quite working in the same way. But the logic is the same. We have a trigger. So when the uh, living room changes the playing, and it's after sunset, we're activating movie scene, right? This is arbitrary. You could be using a button, you could be using voice command, you could be using anything you want to activate the movie scene. The scene is something that you haven't quite seen yet, <laughs> um, but I'll show you where you can actually configure one. So scenes are just the second tab after automations and just click add scene and you give it a name, you can give it an area and you just add devices and entities and I'll show you the one that we've got. So you, you can actually also add a little MDI icon, which is quite nice. So you can see we've got the lights switched on and off in a, in a certain way. So you can, for example, you can just add like lamp. You can say, okay, the lamp in the living room needs to be set. And the, what you're setting it here is what is going to be set at when you actually activate the scene. So if I, if I put this at 10%, I'm quite happy with that. And I can do special effects or whatever you want to do. And you can say, okay, so this is gonna be my scene. I change the scene. And in this way, if you have uh, multiple automations triggering the same scene, you have it all in one place and makes it uh, easy to control. One of the annoying things is when you're actually watching a movie, other things start happening in your house. Just imagine you've had a long day, you're triggered your movie scene, you're ready to go, and one of those like vacuum, rubber vacuum cleaners just starts cleaning because it's like 10 p.m. and it's the routine scheduled time. 
and it annoys you, makes a hell of a lot of noise and you need to you find your phone or something to, to send it back to base, right? What this does is something similar. The idea here is if the media source starts playing when you can see I'm picked, for example, Kitchen Apple TV as this example, the actual rubber vacuum is cleaning while it's playing, then it will actually return to base. So in this example, the robot needs to be already cleaning. So you could create another automation which does the other scenario. So this is the scenario where the robot vacuum is cleaning, you turn the television on, so you start playing, the, the vacuum goes back to base. But if you wanted the other scenario that I told you earlier, so your trigger in this example would be if the robot vacuum starts cleaning, then your condition would be if the TV is also playing, then send it to base. In that example, you're covering inbuilt app scheduling, which would affect this. You can also also disable the inbuilt, inbuilt scheduling in the app and use just Home Assistant to control it. But in this way, if someone does turn the schedule on, you have a way of dealing with that scenario. If you didn't quite catch what I said, then just comment in the section down below and I will uh, explain myself in more detail. If you missed my previous video when I actually set up the media players and the TVs to get them working, you'll see the video over here. I'll see you in that video. This was Gio from Smiler Makers. Ciao.